Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who had received two, another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of the servant came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you, have, since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, You wicked and lazy servant, so you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter. Should you not then have put my money into the bank so that I could have got, so I've got it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. This gospel today is often referred to as the Matthew effect. And the Matthew effect is this principle that the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. It's a principle that's just evident in our world. There's no blame or judgment against it. It's not a good thing or a bad thing. But it just seems to be a reality that the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. And so Jesus, whenever he's doing parables, he always draws from life examples. And so he's taking this example of finances and showing us that the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. But what he's doing is he wants to help this to illustrate our faith life. That those whose faith is rich will grow richer and those whose faith is poor will grow poorer. And so I want us all to think about this and just kind of like evaluate where we are on our faith journey. I think especially during this time of pandemic, it's good for us to to take a step back and look and see, during this pandemic, has it helped increase my faith? Or has it really taken me away from my faith? I think just during this time of uh, uncertainty, during this time where we don't have our normal routine, during the time where masses were taken away for a while, or you're dispensed from coming to mass for a while, or maybe you're watching on TV, Am I growing in my faith 
or is it being taken away? So think about that. From the time the pandemic started until now, has your faith grown or has it been lost? A man came up to me at a funeral recently and I'd known him for one of my early, earlier assignments. I haven't seen him in years. But he came up to me with his wife and he said to me, Father, you saved my life. And I looked at him and I, I wasn't quite sure what he meant by that because I don't remember saving his life. And he said to me that um, uh, when I was at that parish, his, his kid was in grade school and they're in like in high school and college now, but his kid was in grade school and he'd come to me for confession. And as often I do with grade school kids, I ask, have you been going to mass? Um, have you missed mass? You know, that's one of the sins that kids kind of forget to bring up. And so I must have asked him if he'd missed mass and uh, his dad told me that he said yes. And so uh, um, apparently I gave him the penance to go home and to invite his parents to come to mass that Sunday. And so when he went home and invited his, his dad, he said, hey, do you think we can go to Mass this Sunday? Father gave this to me as a penance. He, he said to himself, he was just kind of like blown, like knocked back, blown away by his child, um, asking him to take him to Mass and realizing that he hadn't been going, realizing that his faith was at a very low level. So he came to Mass that Sunday, and I had just started a renewal program, and we were doing a pitch for men to join the renewal and to, to be a part of this, and he joined the renewal, and it changed his life. And he said he's still part of that renewal group and that men's group that started all those years back. Father, you saved my life. I use this story as a real example that God gives us invitations to grow in our faith all the time. I mean, if you even just pick up and look at the church bulletin at the things that we have going on, are we, like, investing ourselves in the faith? Are we taking every opportunity that we have? Or are we dying? The reality is in the spiritual life, it's one of two ways. We're either growing and increasing our faith, or we're dying and burying our faith. And so I think it's important to kind of ask ourselves, am I an active Catholic or am I a passive Catholic? So if you think about the, the, the people investing their money, they were either actively investing their money over and over again, or they were passive. He was bearing his money, and it was taken from him. This is really a life and death thing, because if we're not growing in our faith, we're dying. We're dead. So am I an active Catholic or a passive Catholic? So we have a first communicant here today who's going to be receiving communion for the first time, and Xander will experience receiving the Lord Jesus. He's a very active Catholic at this moment right now. And all of us here today are participating in the Eucharist. We're active Catholics. We're receiving Christ. But it also means, do we take any opportunity that we can to grow in the faith? Anytime anyone invites us to something to grow in the faith, do we say yes to it? Or are we passive? You know, maybe we're here today and we receive communion and we don't do anything during the week to invite anybody else into the faith. It's not just about actively receiving the faith, but it's about actively handing on the faith, actively evangelizing. I think about, too, like, hopefully by the end of my priesthood, I've helped other young men into the priesthood. Like, I, I hope that by the time that I die, there will be other young men that want to be a priest because of my priesthood. And I would think for all of you who have been baptized, that hopefully in your life, you are able to say you've grabbed at least one or two or three or four people that didn't have faith and brought them into the faith. That would be an act of Catholic. And so as we're given this time of using our gifts and talents differently during this time of the pandemic, I would just like you to reflect on that and think about that. What gift has God given you? What unique way can you take the faith and evangelize to this world and help this world be set on fire. Because if we're not doing that, we're a passive Catholic. If we're not doing that, we're bearing our talents. And if we're not doing that, we're going to die. Now this uh, passage that you heard today, the phrase that, was, that we heard today, for everyone who has more will be given and grow rich, and from, from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away is used in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. All three of the, those Gospels. That's how important of a message this is. 
And it's one of those messages that we hear, and it, it, it should disturb us and think like, gosh, I hope I'm not the one bearing my talent. I don't want to be sent out wailing and uh, grinding my teeth in the darkness outside. But in order for that not to happen, we've got to be active. In order for that not to happen, we have to be constantly investing in our faith, constantly growing in our faith, constantly evangelizing and inviting other people into our faith. And so let's take a moment just after this homily to reflect on that. Am I an active Catholic, actively receiving, actively taking every opportunity, actively passing on the faith? Or am I a passive Catholic? Because it is a matter of life and death.